you're somebody who knows the law and uh, can persuade people and maybe do some naughty things that you're not supposed to. Right? That seems to be the current idea of a lawyer. Advocacy to me is about telling stories for people who can't tell their own stories. When we look at life and we look at society, I think we realise that it's composed of human beings who need to relate to each other. How do we relate to each other except to talk about our stories, about where we came from, what's important to us, and so on. But not everyone knows how to do that. Especially in Asia, the thing about Asians is that we tend to be a bit more respectful full of boundaries, we tend not to share as much. I find that people in the West, they tend to talk about themselves more. And this is something we don't have in, for example, Singapore. So when that happens, the more talkative among us in Asian society have to speak up for them. And we call those people advocates. Advocacy is about persuasion. It's about persuading somebody to see things your way. Right or wrongly, that's up for them to decide. Uh, but we are just there to make the argument and make it clear why we are saying this um, and to what purpose. But of course, advocacies can be involved in all, all sorts of things. I mean, you know, if, if you are manager of, 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 of a firm, not a legal firm, and you have to sell things, and you're advocating to the customer to buy your, your products. That's advocacy, right? It's a question of telling a story that's convincing and the consumer saying, yes, I would like to uh, buy that product. That, that, that's to me, advocacy is the same thing. From my perspective as in-house counsel with Google, advocacy is a lot about being a trusted business partner with the project teams that you work with. I think what is unique about being an in-house counsel compared to a lawyer in private practice is that you sit with the teams, yeah, you brief the deals. Some areas of law may be a little bit more perhaps regulatory based or maybe more academic based. But when we're doing infrastructure projects, we are dealing with a very realistic question here. How to finance these multi-million, sometimes billion dollar projects sustainably over a long term in a way that marries the interests of the public, private as well as people sector. So I'm a restructuring and insolvency lawyer. I'm a partner in uh, Denton's Rodak in Davidson. So I chose this area of law because um, it's a fast-moving uh, area of law. There's a lot of grey um, areas. Uh, it gives you a chance to actually break new ground and uh, make new law, which I've done in a, in a couple of cases. Most lay people would, would assume that advocacy is going to court and arguing, you know, um, you know maybe they watch lots of Ellie McBeal or various uh, legal dramas. But, um, but they don't know that actually building the client's case strategy starts from community gritty documents, you know, crafting the correspondence for the client. So it's a lot of um, background work which is actually just as satisfying as um, the, the court drama, even though it's not easy and you know, it can entail very long hours. But I, if I could choose all again, I would do this all again. A day in my life as the general counsel of Valorum, I think every day is different. I would have to say that there are um, many curveballs that are thrown. <laughs> there are many, many legal um, issues that may crop up in a day. Yeah, I think meetings and more meetings and drafting. And I think I've never looked back and I, I never regretted uh, embarking on this uh, career. And when I came back to law, I realised that we do make a difference because so many people have so many different problems. And as a lawyer, a lot of the times we can find very good solutions for the problems that they have. If you're stateless, what can we do? You were hard done by somebody, you were hurt by somebody, the why is. Uh, we can help people, genuinely help people. The desire to advance a cause which on the face of it, ex facie, is so unjust that it simply invokes a, a very strong sense of uh, outrage almost. You know, like uh, mothers who are uh, citizens giving birth to children overseas and then they are not citizens by operation of law, whereas a father is. So these kind of issues 
are very stark reminders of the fact that there, are, there is so much that can be done by lawyers who have some forensic skill. There is a gladiatorial aspect to it, for sure. And, and you can't be lily-livered, you can't be you know, a pushover where it's all about you know, just trying to run an intellectual point because there are times that you have to roll up your sleeves and when you see something that's, that's incorrect, you have to be robust and uh, vigorous in terms of your perspectives. But there is a third piece, and that is being a healer. You could understand doctors being healers, but uh, a lawyer is a healer. They've never heard a message like this. But there are dimensions of healing, conciliation, mediation. How do we say something, whether orally or in writing? But there are other ways that you can make the point and make it um, in, in a healing and a, in, even in a relational manner. Where lawyers can help is that we can start to use the law as a means of transforming society. And first, the first step we have to do is we have to raise awareness of what the law is and what the law can do. This means that lawyers have to step out of their offices and into the real world to start to influence society. Lawyers have to become influencers and to do that we have to learn to communicate not just with other lawyers or to judges. We have to stop speaking a secret language of law with all those fancy Latin terms. And we have to start talking like normal people. We have to start relating to normal people, persuading them, advocating for them, and in general being more a part of the big conversation. That's the future of lawyering. So the difference that I would like and maybe hope to make is to contribute to making this country or at least the community that we live in one where we can flourish, where, one where there isn't so much trauma about, one that if you're a part of that community or society you say it's great to be alive and well let's see what we can do together.